Well, how do you do, buckaroos? This is Joe Layden of Cowboys and Indians magazine. And it is my pleasure today to talk to Aura Brown, cow puncher, stunt man, and as you can see, spiffy dresser. Uh, Mr. Brown is one of the interviewees in the upcoming documentary, Freedom on the Range, which will premiere uh, Saturday, February 26th on INSP. Well, howdy. How are you, sir? Um, time and again in this documentary, uh, you and other uh, black cowboys point out the fact that, uh, you know, when you were growing up, uh, you might not have been aware of the fact that not only were there, you know, contemporary black cowboys, but they've always been, you know, black cowboys. And, you know, I, I've told this story before, but, you know, I, I can remember being on the original junket for uh, Unforgiven. And there were a small group of reporters in talking to uh, Clint Eastwood. And uh, I'm not going to identify her by name because she's no longer with us, but uh, there was a, 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 a reporter of a certain age, let's say. And uh, she asked, Eastwood, well, why did you cast Morgan Freeman, you know, in this? There were no black cowboys. And Eastwood, bless his heart, sort of Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, there were lots of black cowboys. <laughs> and, you know, then, you know, looked away. Uh, how old were you when, you know, you realized that, you know, uh, even though you were seeing, uh, you know, mostly white guys on TV, there actually were black cowboys? There were. There were. Um, Joe, I, I have to give you some back history first. So, uh, my father, uh, he was a cowboy. Uh, okay. He was from he was from Sedan, Kansas, just north of uh, Pahuska, right over the Kansas line. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to work on some big ranches around you know northeastern Oklahoma, uh, southeastern Kansas. And uh, it was he was born in 1912, so he was 72, and my mom was 42 when I was born. And uh, wow, he passed away. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. He's a cradle robber. What did I say? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't got it. You don't got it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And, uh, and so as uh, he passed away when I was six from cancer, but as I grew up, I didn't really have anybody to uh, teach me or show me how to start cowboying because all my uncles had passed away, mainly by the time I was nine or 10, and they were the only cowboys I knew. And so um, about the age of 12, I would think, 12 or 13 maybe, I had a neighbor that I would go over to his house and I'd pack my dad's old heavy saddle, you know, maybe a quarter mile, half a mile over to this guy's house. And he had an old done horse he'd let me kick around on. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where it started, you know, without read, not just all the millions of Louis L'Amour books that I read as a kid, you know, and like every other, you know, guy pretty much probably in the back then did too. But, uh, I think it started there, you know, and it had always kind of been a dream of mine to be a cow puncher, cowboy, you know, um, just because my dad was. And I think it was something that inspired me to kind of want to be like him, uh, to keep his name going on and keep that name going on. So uh, I think it started about that age when I was probably about 12 ish. Uh, and it just kind of escalated from there. There was a little break when I was in the military, but uh but other than that, I kind of, I just kind of about all I've ever done was was punch cows. So, and you know. now you, you're you're still doing this in Oklahoma, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I've always lived in Oklahoma. Well, not like until I graduated high school, and then I kind of drifted for a while throughout the military. And even whenever I was out cowboying on different ranches, I kind of stayed down in the southwest area down there. And uh, I didn't come back to Oklahoma till about 2013. Uh, I came home and uh, started working on a ranch for a little bit, and I was, uh, and my mom got cancer uh, around that time, and uh, so I kind of just stayed around to kind of be there for her and stuff too, mm -hmm. as much as I could. Uh, and so I married my wife, my current wife, and she's from Pasco also. We've known each other our whole lives, and uh, she we've been here since probably 2014, I'm guessing. Uh, just kind of cowboying around and I managed a cow calf operation for about six years over in Pahuska. And uh, 
about three years ago, I took up the film business. A buddy of mine got me in it. He called me and asked me if I ever wanted to, if I ever thought about like wrangling horses on a movie set, uh, taking care of horses. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, you know, and uh, kind of an adventurous type son of buck myself, you know. So uh, I, I was kind of getting burnt out, you know, managing and I wanted something new. And so I took it and kind of just kind of took off from there, you know. So now you worked on uh, The Heart of They Fall. And uh, which, by the way, uh, is a terrific movie. I mean, I, I, I've already seen it about three times now, once in the theater, where it, it, it really it's rocks the house. That's awesome. You know, uh, you know, particularly the scene where you, you, you know, they ride into the white town and you can tell, right? you know, people are the, you know, like one person catches it and then a couple of beats and then somebody else catches it and laugh. It's like, you know, slowly but surely, you know, everybody. Everybody's like laughing, you know? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But now, uh, and that, that movie had Bass Reeves. So, uh more recently, uh, you have worked on uh, the uh, <clears throat> Martin Scorsese film, Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, were you uh, a stuntman in that or bit player? Or? Uh, I was not. Actually, I was a wrangler in that. Uh, and I got, in a, but as I was a wrangler, they kind of put me in, uh, I guess they kind of wanted to, I don't know how much I can really talk about it yet because it's not out yet, mm -hmm. but um but well, you're among know, friends. Kinda, you can you can you can just tell us a little bit. Well, well, I mean, it's nothing, nothing, it's nothing incriminating. But they, <laughs> they, they had me kind of. I was like a, you know, like a black guy in the parade, and it was so funny because I was like the only black guy in the movie at that point. <laughs> <You> know, so, <laughs> so I was like riding down the street, you know. There's like I think there was like KKK members behind me back then, and it was it was like the funniest thing you'd ever seen in your life. It was oh great. Lord, oh Lord. But uh, you've also uh, been writing uh, for uh, the 1883 brand. You have been have, a sir, have. for uh, La Monica Garrett. So, so why don't you tell us what La Monica Garrett is really like? Oh, La Monica, man. He, his, no, no lie to you. La Monica, it didn't even take us long to hit it off because like we're sitting there one day and he walks up, I can't remember, he had a Green Lantern ball cap on. And I'm a big comic book person myself. I'm a big DC fan, that kind of stuff, Marvel, but I'm more of a DC fan. And I was like, oh, your hat is so dope, you know? And he was like, and he saw my cowboy hat I had on it. He's like, I love yours, man. And so we started kind of talking and he didn't know I was his double yet. And so uh, we, were, we, were out, we were out just kind of riding horses that morning, just kind of everybody just practicing the riding and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we got to talking about comic books we got to talking about you know uh uh he, he was a big giants fan and i'm a i'm a i'm a giants fan too myself he loved anything for san francisco and i've always i've been a 49ers fan since like jerry rice and joe montana so like me and him we got we matched we meshed on that you know and uh he became like a big brother you know it was like anytime i had some like anything i wanted to ask him about the industry or anything he was always willing to just like boom, turn around and start talking to me. And we, we have, we have great conversations. I mean, great guy, even to this day, I still call it, you know, if I have a question about something and he still just, boom, picks up the phone or shoots me a text back or something like that. Uh, he's a very down to earth guy. Well, while you were involved with 1883 and, and, you know, the, we know Carolyn Sheridan, you know, will have hitmen go out after people who tell anything about you know, an upcoming episode, uh, but, uh, oh yeah, uh, but uh, what was the most dangerous stunt you had to do in the episode that's already been out there uh, on 1883? Um, honestly, this one, this show for me, it was actually a pretty easy gig. It was, it was, uh, Jason Rodriguez, he always took us through, you know, the motions of, of the scenes that we had to do, and we and we rehearsed them. And uh, excuse me, Jason Rodriguez is what the stunt coordinator. Yes, 
Judge Rodriguez was stunt coordinator. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry okay. about that. So, sorry, but, yeah, you know, and so we, we would go through the motions of it, you know, day, you know, a day before, you mm -hmm. know, hours before a scene or something. And it was, there was never anything. And, and, and since La Monica was so athletic himself, like he could ride horses and stuff like that. But like they would want me like to do things like when they had to like run really fast across the pasture or something, or uh, you know things that, like bailing your horse in a river and diving off into the water, you know that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, so those are really the there wasn't a lot of big like dangerous type stunts for me on that one. Uh, it was it was actually just a some, a pretty easy gig of just kind of just riding, just riding and riding fast, riding hard or or, you know, gunfights running at each other type stuff, you know? So uh, there wasn't a lot of big dangerous things on this one. Not for me anyways. Now, or you, you may have noticed uh, I'm white. Uh, in, in, in fact, you know, if I were any whiter, I would be translucent. Uh, but uh, while, while I was growing up, I think the first, well, the first black cowboys I saw, they, I think Jim Brown, you know, it was, you know, but there was a, a 60s TV series uh, called The Outcasts. Outcast? And, and, you know, Otis Young uh, was a bounty hunter. And uh, Don Murphy. Uh, and, and they didn't really like each other. You know, they, they, they sometimes had racially charged insults that they threw at each other. But uh, I have to say that was like, the first time on a weekly TV say, oh, oh, I guess they were black out back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but things really haven't changed that much, have there, in terms of there being, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get, on, get you or me on a soapbox here, but, uh, you know, th there really aren't that many black cowboys on TV. And of course, there are not that many Westerns on TV anymore, but still, uh, La Monica, uh, is about it, and, and until you know Taylor Sheridan gets his Bass Reeves series going, and I bet yeah. you've already applied for a job on that one, right? Dude, I've, I've I've wanted to do that one for a long time, but you know, like I, you know, I'm I'm just a stunt guy, so you know, I'm I'm just now wanting to uh, start breaking into the acting thing. I'd love to act, like I I would love to. Uh, but my journey had, had taken me from a wrangler to a stunt man, and then mm -hmm. hopefully it takes me to an actor one day, you know. But as uh, so it to me, you know, I grew up watching, you know, Rawhide, Bonanza, you know, like I said, my dad was born in 1912, so he's like an old, old cowboy, like even when I was born. So we'd sit there, and he'd come in for lunch, or you know, in the evenings or something, and we'd sit and we'd watch, you know, these old shows and stuff. And uh, I grew up, I still to this day, still to this day, I still watch Bonanza. It comes on at lunchtime. You know, like I, I, I come in the house and I, I'll sit and watch Bonanza at lunch, Big Valley, Gunsmoke, you know. Uh, but those are the guys that I grew up with, watching Clint Eastwood, Sam Elliott, you know, all of Tom Selleck, all those guys like that. And uh, so growing up, I never got to see black guys on the screen. You know, it, it wasn't, I never really had anybody to look up to. Uh, except for my father and them, and even even then, they had already passed away, mm -hmm. you know. So I really didn't have any cowboys to look up to. So I kind of I kind of taught myself how to, uh, you know, how to rope. I taught myself how to ride. Uh, and as I got older, you know, I had people mentor me and make me better and uh, more skillful in these skills, you know. Excuse me, but uh, but in the beginning, I didn't have anybody, and all I hung out with were white cowboys because where I was from, that's all there were, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't really know there were black cowboys till, shoot, I think since probably until I was like 19 or 20, 19, probably when I got in the army. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I knew there was like, you know, Fred Whitfield and some rodeo guys, Bill Pickett, you know, and I, I've heard of like, but I didn't know any like living, living black cowboys. Like you didn't see any on, on, on the big screen, you know? Um, and so for me, and not ones that just punch cows, they were all rodeo guys. Mm -hmm. And so, and so when it came to working cows on a ranch, I'd never heard of black ranch cowboys. And then all of a sudden, when I got in the army, I talked to a buddy of mine, he was from Texas, and uh, his family raised cattle, and he came up, his dad had cowboy, he cowboy, and I was like, what? There's other black cowboys out there? I was like, holy crap. He's like, <laughs> like, rodeo associations full of black people and this and that. 
I never even been to a black rodeo. I had none of that stuff, you know. I got anything. I went to my first black rodeo until I was like 20, I don't know, late 20s. Probably my late 20s. I'm 37. It was, I was in my late 20s before I ever even went to a black rodeo. But so I didn't rodeo myself. I ranch rodeo from time to time, but I didn't like team rope and calf rope. I just worked ranches. I'm just a cow puncher, you know. I just wanted to, I'd rather stay on the ranch and, you know, try it out in the big country and stuff and work, work cows for a living. Like that was my passion. It wasn't really more the rodeo the same. Well, you, 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 certainly acquitted yourself well in the competition series though didn't you or or i'm, I'm losing you sound you're losing my sound yeah now, I, now i've got you now okay. I got you. okay can you hear me now yes yes okay sounds like we're doing a phone commercial doesn't it yeah i know right can you hear yeah. me now yeah <laughs> <laughs> so anyway you, you, you were on the uh, Ultimate Cowboy Showdown, right? Yes, sir, I was. That was a great experience. Uh, you know, honestly, I had just started doing film work then. I was on my first show in Savannah, Georgia, Underground Railroad that came out on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I was just, I was just working horses in it. And then there was, there's this, you see the camera do like this, one of the background guys. Mm -hmm. I'm like one of the little slave guys that come out and grab the horse as they pull up to the to the plantation mansion, you know? Mm -hmm. So you really don't see me anywhere in there. I was just a Wrangler more than anything. But that was my first gig. And a buddy of mine called me and was like, hey man, have you seen that Cowboy Showdown? I was like, man, I never even heard of it, dude. But, you know, and he was like, you should watch it. Well, I, normally I don't watch it, a lot of modern cowboy stuff. No, I'm, I'm kind of an older school cowboy type stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh man, I was like, I'll check it out. He's like, man, I got season two. You need to sign up for it. They're looking for people. So I started kind of watching it in my hotel room and uh, I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to sign up for it. Screw it. And so uh, I signed up for it and shoot, they called me back, I don't know, 15 minutes later or something. And they were like, hey, Laura, how you doing? Do you want to do a, do you want to do a Skype interview and blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. did a Skype interview and it went from there, you know, but uh, they were all great people, great people to work with. Uh, I don't know so much about doing those type of shows anymore. <laughs> uh you know, because I mean, so me and my wife watch a lot of them, so I kind of pick them apart. And now that I've done one, I really pick them apart, you know, and it's like, you know, and you know, the drama is what sells on those shows. And, you know, more kudos to them because everybody's just out trying to make money. We understand this. But, you know, for my character and my just me personally, it was just it just kind of wasn't my jam, you know, uh, you know, like, oh, hey, hey, you need to talk bad about this guy or not talk bad about him, but just <laughs> say something that's controversial, you know. To, to maybe heat something up, you know, and that's that's just not who I am. I don't do that kind of stuff. But, but whatever you do, don't say anything bad about Trace Adkins because he, uh, you know, Tra Trace don't take Trace don't take that very very well. Uh, you know, if you say anything bad about him, man, you know, I'm like Trace. I like Trace the whole time. I, he see because to me, he was like one of the type of like in Osage County here in Pahuska. Either you punch cows or you work in the oil field. You know, and Trace Atkins was, and Trace Atkins was just one of those good old old field type boys. You know, I mean, guys, I I still drink beer with to this day. You know, so like I, I had no problem with Trace. He was right up my alley. You know, so yeah, good dude. Yeah, we've talked with him uh, many times. He's a, he's the real deal. And speaking of real deals, Freedom on the Range, it is going to be on Saturday, February twenty sixth on INSP. And uh, Laura Brown is going to be one of the interviewees. Look for him, listen to him. And uh, Laura, thank you for spending some time with us. Joe, thank you. It's been a blessing. I appreciate you.